Yo, 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 what's going on, everybody? How you doing? You know who this is, the chosen one, Gabriel Skywalker from the DFS Club, coming to you with the UFC Fight Night video. Jared Cannonier versus Kelvin Gastelum. Guys, if you're new, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Leave me a comment down below. This is for DraftKings, FanDuel, Fantasy Sports, guys. Um, yeah, thank you so much for the support lately. This channel has been exploding, and... I'm no one to thank but you guys. So thank you, thank you, thank you. If you're returning, welcome back. Welcome back, guys. So we had a week off of, of UFC and now it's back. And man, it seems like it's been forever, but man, have I missed it. So yeah, guys, let's get into it. First off, if you want to join the family, guys, you want to join the DFS club, which you get every single sport, you get two providers in one. You get DFS space, you get myself Skywalker DFS. And if you play DraftKings, FanDuel, Fantasy Sports, Prize Picks, Sports Wagering, this is the, the home for you guys. And we do every single sport, everything NBA, NFL, MLB, PGA, NHL, tennis, NASCAR, soccer, esports, UFC, WNBA, college sports. We got college basketball, college football coming up, guys. All you got to do is click join now. Click on my logo, Skywalker DFS. And again, guys, we're the cheapest in the industry, and it's not even close. $14.99 a month is cheaper than anybody out there. And that includes every single sport, NFL, everything, guys. Um, we do prize picks, sports wagering, like I said, guys. One hour before lock, we do the members-only podcast. So come check us out. We got the silver, the gold plans, and just the three-day passes. If you want to come hang out. And our Discord, come get the lineups, the whole shebang. Every single thing is all access, guys. So it's not just one sport, have you, just UFC. No, you get everything. So if you play DraftKings, FanDuel, we are the daily fantasy sports powerhouse, guys. Come check us out, dfsclub.com. All right, so let's get into it. I'd have to say this is a really decent card. Um, I wasn't too excited about the last card in – it was a pay-per-view, but this one, I think it might be better. I don't know, and I, I kind of see a lot of dogs barking in this card. So let's get into it. We'll start off with the prelims. First up, we got Ramiz uh, Brahmajaj versus Sasha Poliknikov, guys. So we all remember Ramiz. He got his ear ripped off by Max Payne Griffin, who I will be having on my show um we just got to work out the details but yeah he agreed to come on the show so another reason to subscribe i do interview ufc fighters coaches you name it guys ufc is my favorite sport so um but yeah ramiz brajama is 8.5k on DraftKings. sasha politnikov can be had at 7.7 .7. um so ramiz man he's a grappler you wouldn't have known it by his last fight but he's that's actually his thing um hopefully he got his ear back hopefully max gave it back to him um the only way he wins here guys is if he actually uses his wrestling his grappling his takedowns i mean he's a decent striker but he he, he can't sit there and bang with sasha he that's not a good way for him to that's not a good path to victory for him um he's a submission specialist man he goes for takedowns sasha he's a striker he's always got good forward pressure up in your face um, he's a counter puncher. He'll wait for you to throw one, then he'll throw two back at you. Lots of kicks everywhere, head, body, whatever, what have you. Um, give me Ramiz Brahamash here at 8.5K. And then again, just for ownership purposes, like normally the first fights of the card are low owned. Um, I actually think Ramiz gets a finisher. So at 8.5K, we'll take that finish. Uh, Sasha was submitted to his last uh, fight, which I was kind of surprised after looking so good after his debut. But, yeah, guys, I'm going to go with Ramiz, and I'm going to hope to God that he goes back to his uh, what he's good at, which is grappling and wrestling. So, But, yeah, I'm going to take a shot here at 8.5K. All right, next up, we have a broken prospect here. And Rose actually two broken prospects. Roosevelt Roberts versus Ignacio Bermuda's guys. I don't know how to fucking pronounce it. Roosevelt Roberts can be had at 8.4K. You got uh, Ignacio at 7.8K. Um, I don't know. It's kind of a close one here. Um, 
Roosevelt Roberts, man, he's a striker, but just kind of low volume. Hopefully he picks it up here. He's a counter puncher also. He'll wait for one to give a couple. Decent grappling. Um, goes for takedowns and has a lot of guillotines, man. He has one of the nastiest guillotines I've seen. Um, and then Ignacio, he's a striker, very fast. Good boxing. He throws lots of kicks, man. Um, he's high volume. He's also, you know, kind of big for the division here. Um, not my most confident pick, but yeah, I'm going to take Roosevelt Roberts here at 8.4K, but I do think it probably goes to the judges. So I don't know, not a, not a fight that I'll probably have a lot of exposure to, but the pick is going to be Roosevelt Roberts at 8.4K. All right. So moving right along, man, we got, we got some big boys here. We got William Knight versus Fabio. Not, I can't believe it's not butter Fabio, but Fabio Chirant, guys. Uh, William Knight can be had for 9.4K. Fabio at 6.8K. William Knight, man, he's built like Mr. Olympia. This dude is so much, so muscular, man. Um, he's a striker. He's powerful, man. Nasty, nasty kicks. He's very strong. You can just tell by looking at him. Good cardio, too, for a big guy. Normally, that's that's pretty rare. Um, he has no takedown defense to speak of. Um, but, you know, when he, when the, Goes to the ground. He's got a really good ground and pound if he gets you to the ground. Fabio, 6.8K. He's a striker. Good boxing. Poor takedown defense. So if he gets taken down, I think uh, William Knight might get him out of there via ground and pound. Um, Fabio is a southpaw. So the line here is is tightened up. It was very high. And you can see from the prices here on DraftKings, 9.4 for William Knight as opposed to Fabio at 6.8. Um, my goodness, man. I think it's going to go to the judges. And I think there's some value to be had on Fabio Chirant at 6.8K. I believe he's probably, is he the cheapest fighter on this card? I think he is. Um, I think the pick is going to be William Knight at 9.4K, but am I going to roster him for that much? No, I'm not. Because you want to finish, you want to early finish. Um, uh, I think Fabio's a live dog here. Um, and at 6.8 K, I think you're getting value there. So I will have both sides of this fight. Um, the official pick is going to be William Knight, but I don't like the price tag. Um, I doubt I even roster him. I'll probably have more Fabio than, than anything. So yeah, the pick is William Knight, but I'm looking to roster Fabio just for pure, like GPP, like, uh, value there. Cause the, the odds are just, it's closer than what the prices are on DraftKings. All right, so next up, man, these two ladies faced off, and it looked like David versus Goliath, man. We got uh, Bay Malaki, Bad News Barbie versus uh, Josie Nunez. Bay is very big for the division, not big like fat. She's very lean. She's gorgeous. She's from Sweden. She's just very tall, guys. Very tall at the, at the face-offs today. Oh, my goodness. What a size difference. So, Bay is 8.6. Um, Nunez is 7.6K, making her UFC debut. Um, but uh, Bea is take, she's taking a one-year off, so she's been gone for a year. Um, she's a striker. She's kind of slow, though. Kind of, you know, slow motion. Nasty elbows, though. Um, she has a great chin. She'll take a beating. She goes for takedowns. And I think that's going to be, have to be her, her, um, path to victory here would have to be to take, uh, Nunez down. Nunez's UFC debut. She's small for the division. It's not just against her, but she's just a small girl striker, good forward pressure, high volume, but she has no takedown defense. I think if, uh, we's going to, try and take her down here, but it's, I don't think it's going to be an easy task because Nunez is a brawler, man. She'll stay in there and bang. Um, I don't know, man. I'm kind of back and forth on this one. I think if Maleki was, if she was faster, it would be like, that would be the all the difference to me. Um, but yeah, give me, give me Malaki here at 8.6K. I will have some sprinkles of Nunez in my lineups, a little exposure, but I think this one probably goes to the judges. So, and it's ladies MMA. So 
a lot of dogs, a lot of underdogs seem to be winning in, in women's MMA. But yeah, the official pick is Malaki here at 8.6. But again, I'd still, I'm going to take some stabs at Nunez too. All right. So next up, we got Brad Kelleher versus Domingo Pilarte, guys. So Brad Kelleher. He's 9K on DraftKings. Domingo Pilarte, 7.2K on DraftKings. That's pretty wide, man. I don't know if it's supposed to be, like, I guess the odds are pretty wide, too, but a lot of money's come in on Brad Kelleher. I mean, he's fun to watch. He's exciting to watch, man. He's a powerful striker, very fast. He also goes for submissions. Um, he'll take it to the ground if he needs to. Domingo Pilarte, though, is going to have a 10-inch reach advantage here. Um, he's a grappler, goes for takedowns. It's basically striker versus grappler here. He's a submission specialist. His striking is decent. He's a southpaw, but we, Kelleher is like on another level as far as like power in his punches. Um, the pick here for me is going to be Brian Kelleher at 9K, and I think he gets it done. Generally, Brian Kelleher gets it done quick. He doesn't get paid by the hour. He goes for the knockout in the first round. Um, I probably won't have any exposure to Domingo, but yeah, the pick here is going to be Brian Kelleher at 9K. Very popular pick. I'm sure it'll be chalky tomorrow. I'll take a look at the ownership. So I got to, you guys got to join the DFS club, man. All right. So next up, we got Luis Saldana versus Austin Lingo. So Saldana's 8.3K on DraftKings. Lingo, 7.9K on DraftKings. So basically just to pick him, a coin flip. Um, Saldana, man, he's a striker. He throws them nasty-ass leg kicks. He's a counter puncher. The thing is with him, man, is his cardio is kind of questionable. He kind of uh, slows down in fights and runs out of gas. Austin Lingo, he's a striker. Good boxing. He's fast, powerful. Good forward pressure. He has he has the better cardio out of the two, I must say. Um, the pick for me here is going to be Luis Saldana. I just liked what I saw better today at the weigh-ins. I mean, Austin Lingo didn't look too good. Um, Saldana looked like the more confident fighter in the face-offs. So this is just a gut read here. I mean, they're pretty evenly matched. It's, you know, but yeah, give me Saldana here at 8.3K. Um, he just looked more confident at the weigh-ins. That's what swayed me here. And that's what basically what you get with a 50-50 fight. So, all right, guys, let's go to the main card. This should be the main event. In my personal opinion, this should be the main event. Um, but I'm not Dana White. I don't book these things. So, we got Alexander Patoja versus Brandon Roy Vell, guys. 8.9 for Patoja, 7.3 for Roy Vell. So Patoja, man, he's been he's fought the who's who. He's fought everybody. He's actually beat Brandon Moreno, the current champion, not once, but twice. Um, so this is basically going to be a number one contenders match. Whoever wins this, I think, is going to fight Brandon Moreno next. Um, so Patoja, uh, he's a grappler, striker, good overall, overall fighter, nasty jab up the front, man, those nasty kicks. He's a brawler. He also goes for takedown. He's a submission specialist. He's never been finished, believe it or not. Uh, Brandon Royville, we saw his last fight. Um, it was unfortunate, like his his shoulder or something popped out during the fight. Um, but he's a striker. Um, let's see. High volume. He's a wild man, dude. Uh, counter puncher. Powerful. He goes for takedowns also. Submission specialist. Good cardio, man. I think both these guys have no problems going three rounds and keeping that pace up really high i'm gonna take my first dog pick of the card guys here i'm gonna take brandon roy Vell at 7.3k i just think he stays more active out there you know he's flashy he throws you know a lot of like crazy stuff out there and that always wins over judges and i do think this one goes to the to the um judges but yeah 7.3k give me brandon roy val and i think he scores pretty good with significant strikes and Maybe gets a couple takedowns. We'll see. Um, you know, it depends on who you ask, man. The, the field's kind of split here. According to Tapology, Pantoja, people voted 64% to Roy Val 36. It's really a 50-50 fight, but my pick's going to be Roy Val. Um, Roy Val a bust for me, man. Let's go. 
All right, so moving right along, guys. Next up, we got you can't see it in this picture here. We got uh, ben, Vince Pichel, guys, versus Austin Mother Hubbard. So another coin flip fight 8.2K for Pichel, 8K for Austin Mother Hubbard. Man, you should see the mustache on Vince, man. He looks like someone you'd see in a jail cell. He legit looks like. Um, you ever watch that show Lock Up or whatever, man? He looks like your typical uh, prisoner with that stash going, man. He's a big dude, though. He's a big dude. People are going to be on him because he's 38 years old, but he don't look it. He don't act it. He's a striker. He's powerful. Um, stick and move, man. That's what he does. And he'll go for takedowns. He guys does have decent grappling. Austin Mother Hubbard, man. I don't like what I saw at Wayne State for him either. He just kind of looked like kind of flat. Um, he's a striker, good forward pressure, questionable takedown defense. So I think if uh, Vincent here, Vincey, sorry, can uh, get some takedowns, I think that's going to be the difference in the fight. Um, give me Pichel here at 8.2K. I just don't see a path to victory for Austin Hubbard, man. I think Pichel is hungry, and I like what I've been seeing from him lately. So, yeah, guys, and I think that's a good price. I think it goes to the judges, though. But, yeah, I think he wins a unanimous decision. All right. Next up, we got Tevin Jones, who just for the life of him, he's got luck like mine. He just can't catch a break. This man has all the fighters have been backing out from him. Um, that's a concern. He's 8.8K. He's, he's a striker. He's a counter puncher. The thing is, we got this guy over here, Sabib, as what I'm going to call him. I'm just going to call him Sabib because I'm not going to try and even pronounce his fucking name. It's the unknown with him. Um, he's a striker, grappler from what I've seen, powerful punches, brawler, takedowns. It, he's pretty good on the mat, man. Um, again, coming in on short notice, but Tevin Jones has been walking around at a lighter weight than what he normally does. I mean, he's trained for three different fighters now. Made weight today just fine. Um, normally that's a concern, especially for cardio. If this goes late into the fight, man, I don't know. I'm willing to take a shot here. I love I love Tevin Jones. I love the way he fights. I just have a bad feeling about it, man. I'm gonna take the another, I'm gonna take a second underdog here. I'm gonna go with Saeed here. Um, I think he gets it to the ground and 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 controls it, man. I really do. I'm just concerned about Jones with his uh and it's not his fault. It's just everyone backed out on him. So, you know, I don't know if he's fully prepared mentally for this fight physically because of you know walking around probably eating fucking lettuce for the last three months and you know that's something that is really concerning but yeah i'll take the stab here at saeed at 7.4k it's the unknown too man all right next up we got Chase Sherman, I call him the imposter because he calls himself the Vanilla Gorilla. There is only one Vanilla Gorilla, and he will be on my show, guys. Um, Jason Witt is the Vanilla Gorilla, not this imposter, Chase Sherman. I'm sure Chase is a nice dude, but you ain't taking my boy's nickname versus Parker Porker at 7K. You know, Parker's lost weight. I can't give him that much shit. And he's looked better, man. He's looked better as of late. 9-2 for Shea Sherman, though. I don't know, guys. I don't know about that. I think it's a little overpriced. He's a moderate favorite in this one, even by the Vegas odds. Um, but then again, I don't wanna, I don't wanna would I feel confident in picking Porker here at 7k? No. Chase Sherman, man, he's a striker, powerful, nasty leg kicks. He's got a nasty front jab. Um, the only thing with him, with me, is I worry about his cardio. I worry about him slowing down in fights. Parker Porter has pretty good cardio for a big dude, man. I think when it comes to a fighter, he's a better overall fighter. He's a striker, good combos, mixes it up. He mixes it up, man. He'll throw some cap kicks. He'll go for takedowns, too. Um, man, I'm going to take Parker Porter here at 7K. I think, like I said, I think the dogs will be barking on this card. I think Chase just slows down, maybe runs out of gas, and I think Parker Porter probably steals it with some takedowns. But I think this one goes three rounds, and by that third round, man, I think Sherman's going to be exhausted. Exhausted. Um, but yeah, give me Parker Porter at 7K. Not my most confident dog pick, 
not you know, but yeah, I just got a gut feeling. And Parker, I mean, he looks great. He looks great. I'll give it to the big boy. He looks good. All right, next up, man. This is also one I can't wait for. Anytime Clay Guida is on a card, I can't wait, man. We got Clay Guida in the co-main event here um, versus Mark O. Matson. So Guida is 7.1K on DraftKings. Mark O. Matson, 9.1. Now, if you're new and you're saying like, hey, I'm going to try out uh, UFC for DraftKings or FanDuel, Clay Guida, let me tell you about him, man. This dude does not slow down. I don't care what you do to him. He just keeps coming forward like a freaking zombie, man. He's a striker, brawler. He's very durable, man. You're going to have to kill this man to get him out of there. Very high volume. He just does not slow down. Good forward pressure, always in your face. He's a wrestler himself. He's not an Olympian like Marco Madsen, but he'll go for takedowns. He's just a wild man. Very fun to watch, man. He won us money last time. He's only 7.1K. We got Mark O. Madsen, man. He's out of fight ready, though. Fight ready right now is just my man. Um, um, God, guys, it is 158 in the morning. This is what happens when you record videos at 158 in the morning. My goodness. Mark O. Madsen, man, he's. A silver medalist. He's a wrestler. That's all he does. Um, he is undefeated in the UFC. Takedowns, wrestling, ground control. That's what he does. But Clay Guida, man, I don't know if you can keep him down on the ground. Here's the thing. I'm going to have 50-50 of this fight. Um, the thing with Marco Madsen is he's a great cash play because even in a decision, his last fight in a decision, he still got 90 fantasy points. 90. So, I don't know, man. The pick here, oh, it's 50-50. I cannot, I cannot go against fight ready, man. Give me Marco Matson here at 9.1K. And I hope I'm wrong because I hope Clay Guida wins at 7-1. Clay Guida is a live dog here at 7-1. If you want to take him, I will have some Clay Guida in my lineups. Um, he scores, he scores good too, man. Um, but that fight ready camp and you got the wrestling here with Mark Madsen, he just doesn't strike. So if his wrestling fails and he tries to take down clay and doesn't keep him down, he might be in a world of hurt. So it's just, I can't wait for this one. I really can't wait. I'm more excited for this fight than I was for the main event for that last pay-per-view. Uh, but, yeah, the pick's going to be Marco Madsen at 9-1. I just think it's a safe pick just because when it comes to DraftKings and FanDuel, these grappler wrestler guys, that's what you want because they score the most fantasy points with control time, with takedowns. Um, but, yeah, Guida, I hope you win, buddy. I hope you do. I love you, man. I don't want to see you go away. I want to see you around for, like, at least three more years, man. But, uh yeah, my, I think Matson takes it. Um, I think it goes to the judges, though. I think it goes to the judges. So, but yeah, good cash play. Marco Matson at 9.1K. All right. Now we got the main event of the evening scheduled for five rounds. We got Jared Cannon here at 8.7K versus Kelvin Gastelum at 7.5K. This one's going to the judges, I think. So if you want to stack this fight, it's you know if you want to play the safe route and maybe in a cash game and stack this fight, I think that's a good way to go. GPPs, I don't believe in stacking fights. You pretty much on a GPP want to have a perfect card, mainly with early finishes on it. Um, Jared Cannonier, eight point seven K, looked phenomenal at weigh-ins today, but he always looks great. The dude's just shredded. He's big for the division, man. He's a striker. He's gonna have a six-inch reach here. Um, advantage. He's got a nasty front kick, nasty leg calf kicks. Uh, shout out to DFS Bachelor, man. He loves it. He loves seeing those calf kicks. <laughs> uh, good boxing. He's just huge for the division, man. You got Kelvin Gastelum here, man. He's lost four of his last five. The sun might be setting on his career here, uh, but he's never been finished, man. He's never been knocked out. Never has. He's a striker, a wrestler. He missed weight today. He did miss weight. I don't think he gave two shits. He still threw up, you know, his, his, his signature uh, 
flexing his muscle. But, yeah, he didn't make weight, guys. So he's going to give up part of his purse there. Um, he's low volume, too. Um, but, again, he's never been knocked out, man. Jaron Kennedy is coming off a tough loss. But, I mean, who did he lose to? Robert Whitaker. Robert Whitaker looked like a straight ninja in that last fight, man. I don't know if anybody could have beat him in that last fight. But Kellen Gaslam, man, he also lost to Whitaker. Can't can't really, you know, down him for that. He did beat Ian Heisenstrike. Heisen then he lost to Hermanson, the Joker, Darren Till, Israel Adesanya. So not bad competition here. Um the pick for me is going to be Jared Cannonier at 8.7K, but I will have some Kelvin Gastelum at 7.5K because I think even in a loss at 7.5K, he should rack up a decent amount of fantasy points, especially if he gets into the ground, gets some takedowns, some control time. Um, and I don't see Cannonier as good of a striker and powerful he is, man. I don't see him uh, giving Kelvin his first knockout loss. But then again, he's lost four out of his last five, right? So there's concern for that. But the thing is, the losses are against top-notch people. Top-notch. So I'll have a little bit of both. But I will definitely um, have 100% of my lineups. I will have this main event because, I mean, there's good value here. But the pick is Cannoneer. But I will have some Kelvin Gastelum at 7.5, guys. So... That's going to do it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in, so much for watching. I can't wait, man. I've been waiting for a fight card since two weeks ago, I'm sure, like you guys have. Don't forget, DFSClub.com. Come join the family. Love to have you. We're the cheapest in the industry by far. And don't forget, please, if you're new, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Hit that bell icon so you know my videos drop. And if you play Daily Fantasy Sports, man, and you just found my page. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. So this is my second video of the night. I just did an MLB video. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to go to bed. Excuse me. And uh, that's it, guys. I, and I say a prayer for everybody like I always do with my wild man here, here. God bless you. God bless your families. God bless your pets. Thank you, God, for another day on this earth. All right, y'all. Let's get this bread. Don't take shit from nobody. My name's Gabriel Skywalker. Don't forget, guys, subscribe.